Hey guys, it's Will with Rainier Leather Company. I wanted to talk to you today about finishing an edge. Uh, if you go to a department store and you look around, uh, look at wallets, look at belts, anything where there's multiple pieces of leather that are joined together, the edges, a lot of the time, just don't look quite right. And this is something to just pay attention to when you buy something or if you're into leather working or looking to get into it. This is something that you can do. It doesn't take a ton of time that will drastically improve the end product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these couple of pieces of leather. I'm just going to glue them together. I'm not going to stitch them or do anything. I'm just going to glue them up and we're going to show the difference between a finished edge and an unfinished edge. So what are the things that you need to get started here? Well, got to have some leather. Um, something that is vegetable tan leather is what you're going to need to be able to finish an edge this way. Chrome tan leather will not burnish and that's what we're doing here. So it has to be some type of vegetable tan leather. So we got our leather. What else do we need? Something to work on, table, kitchen table, shop bench, whatever it is, uh, a nice solid surface. Then there's another couple of things we're gonna need. Glue, glue pot, that's what I use. Um, I use leather welt, I believe it is. Um, it's non-toxic. You can use some super toxic stuff and lose some brain cells in the process if you prefer. Um, you are going to need some kind of burnishing agent. I use Tokenol. Um, used to use Gumtrack. I like Tokenol a whole lot better. I feel like it gives me a better product. And it says right there on the side, for professional. So you know it's good. They don't put for professional for just any old thing. Then you're going to need some type of edge beveler. There's different sizes. Um, I use this, this uh, just a zero. And this I, I use pretty much across the board. You can get something a little smaller, something a little bigger, depending on the weight of the leather you're working with. So that's the next piece. Gonna need some sandpaper. We're gonna have to sand it down smooth, have a nice place to start. I usually use a few grits, I'll work my way up. I start with um, 150 and I go up to 600. So I usually find one in the middle also. I'm not gonna do it here, save some time. And then you're gonna need something to actually create the friction to burnish the edge. Canvas, just a, a little scrap of canvas works great. I use this a ton. Um, or you can use a slicker like this and we're just using friction. I also have in the back a, um, a little motor that has essentially one of these on it. It makes things go a lot faster if you're doing production runs, trying to knock out 20 or 30 um, at a time of whatever you're making. So, oh, and speed things up a little bit. I got this beautiful pinky purple hair dryer that I am partial to. So we're gonna go ahead and just glue these up real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and tip the camera down. I'll do it right now. Tip the camera down so y'all can see what I'm actually doing here. Get my beautiful mug out of the way. So with your glue, you just wanna make sure when you're putting it on that you're kind of liberal. We wanna make sure that it doesn't soak in all the way and anytime we're using um, leather adhesives, you need to put it on both sides. So I'm just gonna get this on here. I'm gonna be kind of messy because I'm trying to do it quick. So then on there, and then I'll just get it off of this granite later. There's one. And then when you are letting this glue dry, you want it to get tacky. If you leave it on too long before you put them together, it's, uh, it's not gonna have the same grip, but if you put it on wet, you're just gonna wind up having to hold it there until it starts to get tacky because it needs a little bit of time to sit before it um, is creating a decent bond. I'm gonna just slap this on here real quick. Almost done. And then if you're like me and you're kind of impatient, you can go ahead and hit it with the hairdryer and that'll save you from waiting five minutes. And uh, there's a lot of other things that we can do with five minutes, so I'm gonna hit that real quick. And maybe you can see it. The color's gonna change a little bit. It'll start to uh, darken. So here you can see the difference. That's, this is what we're looking for. Darken up a little bit. We'll hit this one real fast too.
Cool, that's good enough for what we're doing. So let's just go ahead and get these things stuck together. Now with this glue, once it's on there, that's kind of where it's gonna live. So have a pretty good idea of where you're gonna put it before you, uh, before you put some pressure on it. Now you can use a small hammer. If you don't have a little hammer, that's fine. Just use your hand. Just make sure that that glue really sets. So now what we're looking at is this edge, you can see the glue. You can see that it's not real even. Now this, a lot of the time, is what you'll see in a department store. Even some nicer stuff, they skip this step and they just kind of leave it like that. I think that's, uh, I think that's garbage. I think that's um, kind of lazy. So I'm gonna take this uh, lower grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna kind of even this out. Try to get it up in here a little bit. And try to get it level. You can do this on a sander too. I have one of those as well, but for the sake of the video, I'm just doing it by hand. And you want this level surface because when you actually start to burnish, it'll be really apparent if it's not level. So that's pretty good for what we're doing anyway. So you can see here versus here, it's already a, a much, much different. Then you'd work your way up through your grits and I'm just gonna skip right here to the 600. Now, as you start to go up and grit, you actually may see it'll start to uh, burnish a little bit, kind of accidentally. Uh, if there's, if you've been using the same piece of sandpaper for a little while. So there we go. So now we have a nice smooth edge, level, but now we have a different problem. You can see it's mushroomed out the edges right here, there and there. So we're gonna wanna clean that up because if we have this weird edge, it's just not gonna look very good. Do it however you want, whatever makes most sense for you. Typically I'll put it on the edge of my granite and that way my bevel can be at the right angle and I'm not getting caught up and uh, it's not holding it off the table. So let me move this in a little closer. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as long as your bevel is sharp, you don't need to put a whole lot of pressure on it. The, the important thing is to be consistent in the angle that you're pushing at. So I'm gonna turn that a little bit. And you can see I'm holding a consistent angle and it's just gonna peel right off, just like that. Flip it over, hit the other side, and now we have something to work with when we start to burnish it. So again, here we go. We've got this nice rounded edge, looks good. And this is our other side that we're not working with. So the difference is, is pretty extreme already. So now we're ready to actually start burnishing. So get your token all, your gum trag, spit, water, orange juice, whatever, and get, get it on that edge. Now with this token all, a little goes a long way. You don't wanna go crazy. I just walk it down the edge here. A little bit more. Now let's just beat it on there. And then I'm gonna just rub it in. Just rub it in. Now, you can either take your canvas or your slicker, and if you're using the slicker, what you're looking for is that it'll, it'll fully cover. There's no, there's no gap over the top. If I were to go way over here, you can see daylight through there. And that's what we don't want. So I'm gonna go right here. And you basically just go back and forth and you'll gain friction. I prefer to use the canvas. I feel like I have a better sense of what's actually happening. And all I'm doing is moderate pressure. I'm not going crazy. And you're just gonna move along the edge. You can see that side's shiny, this side's not. Now you may be able to pick it up, a squeak. Right there. And that squeak, pretty good indication that you have matted down all those fibers enough. And you'll also see it darkens quite a bit. So, unfinished, finished. This is gonna be smooth, you see it picks up the light. This is gonna be smooth. It's gonna look like one piece of leather. And the nice thing here, in addition to just it looking nice, what'll happen is it's gonna seal all those fibers on the edge so that moisture, sweat, 
whatever is not soaking into the leather through the fibers, which will, which will hurt the leather in the long run. And that's it. So one more time, we'll just take a look at it. That's a nice finished edge. So it really doesn't take that much time versus this. Glue, uneven, just looks kind of wonky. So try this on your next piece. Give that a try. See, it doesn't take that much time, doesn't take that much energy, and it'll definitely step up the end product. And uh, I hope this was helpful. Ian, my man, if you're watching this, I sure hope you're feeling better. And, um, you know, if this is something you want to swing by, check out, I'd love to have you. All right, thanks.